Hey, Dave Fannin here with the Body Form Personal Training Fitness Boot Camps. What happens when you stop working out? I've had a number of people coming back into the gym. It's October. They've taken off three months, six months, a year. A couple people came back from three years ago. So what happens when you stop working out? Because I try to convey to people when they're in my program that this is a lifetime endeavor. That, and I know that's a hard sell and it makes people uncomfortable but I'm not here to make you comfortable. I'm here to make you better. That, you're gonna to have to work out in some manner the rest of your life. Exercise in this environment, in the gym, weightlifting, weight loss, nutrition, HIIT training, cardiovascular training, that lays down a foundation of fitness that you can use in other endeavors like swimming, or jogging, or riding a bike, or doing um, CrossFit, or or hiking other things this lays down a foundation because these other things can't keep you in shape the rest of your life it doesn't mean you have to go to the gym for three days a week because I've had people that I know have been in shape their entire lifetime and you might you might be in the gym working with a coach for three or four years laying down a foundation then for five years you'll do yoga and then you might start running because your girlfriend runs and you want to hang out with her and then your husband takes up cycling and you cycle for five or ten years and that's how you stay in shape your whole life it doesn't always mean going in and lifting weights but laying down a foundation but what happens when you say to yourself you know what I can do it on my own and I've yet to have somebody reach out to me and say you know what I quit your program and best decision I ever made I'm in the worst shape of ever so you have to think about what happens when you stop working out, you know, and you're going to do it on your own or work out with my girlfriend at the YMCA, but she doesn't ever show up or, or I'm going to try it on my own at Planet Fitness, which is $9.99 a month. And the reason they price it at $9.99 a month is so if you don't go, which most people won't, you don't notice that they're charging you $120 a year, which is very expensive to not go somewhere. So what happens when you don't work out so there's three factors that go into how fast you lose your fitness the time away from the gym have you been away from the gym for a week or two weeks a month six months a year three years the interesting thing is the most recent research saw within a week a week of inactivity from people that are normally active within one week insulin sensitivity went down which means their blood sugars went up, they started moving towards diabetes. Leg strength and mass dropped in their legs from inactivity and belly fat increased within just one week. And in this paper, it's two weeks and they start seeing some of these changes immediately and changes in your blood, in your blood tests in a short amount of time. But usually within a month, you're already looking at higher indicators of cholesterol, high blood pressure, increased belly fat, less strength. And the thing is, is that that's the kicker, is it doesn't take long to start losing what you've earned the hard way. Age, the older you are, the more dramatic and faster you fall off fitness. That's why in this Fit Over 50 program, or over 40, but especially at 50 and above, you have to be doing something. It's not negotiable or optional for quality of life level of fitness if you're a highly trained high level athlete which none of my people are and never will be and never were you will hold on to your fitness longer and a lot of that's probably genetics too but if you're a regular fitness person that you've laid down the foundation for of a few years of getting into the gym consistently it's the normal timeline of a few weeks month two months and you're in, you're in a little bit of trouble usually within a month you're already you know seeing significant Muscle loss, increase in fat, changes in your blood work. So the physiological impacts on your body, aerobic capacity. Research shows significant reductions in VO2 max within two to four weeks of detraining. This is attributed to decreased blood volume and cardiac output. You're not practicing cardio. You're not using your heart like you were. Therefore, you start losing some of those adaptions. And over a two to three month, over Aerobic capacity gain through exercise over two to three months is lost within two to three weeks. That's the fact. That's why you have to find things that you enjoy. Yeah, I don't 
want to run on the treadmill, great. You don't have to. How about, how about an aerobics class with your girlfriend? Or how about cross country skiing? Or how about cycling? Or how about rowing? Or you could power walk in the neighborhood. Something. You don't have to point out what you can't do. Find something that you can do. And that's where the money is, in the things that you can do. After a few weeks of sitting around, rather than being active, you'll start losing your cardio, find yourself out of breath, just climbing stairs. Muscle strength. A detraining period of 12 weeks results in decreased muscle mass and muscular strength. Although the muscles can return to pre-training levels, the good news is that retraining can occur more quickly as a result of a concept known as muscle memory. And it's a very real thing. Once you're stronger, it's easier to get back to that strength and leanness than trying to get there the first time. I tell people this when they're like, I really fell off the wagon and I don't want to get back on because it was so goddamn painful the first time. And I have to convey, it'll be easier the second time around because muscle has memory. And there's actually cells within your muscle that they help you get back there. Um, while strength performance can be maintained up to four weeks of detraining, power and endurance may decline significantly. In one study, postmenopausal women trained with resistant bands for 12 weeks and found a significant adverse effect on their muscle power during a four-week detraining period. The bottom line, you maintain your strength longer than, your, and, than power and endurance, and you maintain your strength longer than you start, you start losing that aerobic capacity faster too. Side effects, blood pressure. Blood pressure, um, in fact, exercise is a medically accepted lifestyle change to treat hypertension. I have a lot of clients that come in, they're on borderline hypertension. They're already on medications. They don't like it. It makes them feel old and tired. And through nutrition, and not crazy nutrition, but just eating healthy and still being able to socialize and have fun, in a consistent exercise program, moderate, they come off hypertension medications, which are you know, 200, 300 dollars a month. Also blood sugar, a study published by Medicine and Science, Sports and Exercise, found that blood sugar levels remain elevated after just three days of inactivity in young, generally healthy individuals. The unfortunate consequence of being sedentary is it consistently raised glucose levels, raise your risk of heart disease and diabetes. Even a small amount of moderate exercise improves how well body regulates glucose and getting back into your routine will help ward off preventable health conditions. And at the end of and what they're saying basically is it doesn't take much. Two to three 30 minute sessions a week. You're not killing yourself, doing something helps you retain, retain all those good blood markers. And then at 50 and above, just a moderate exercise program two to three times per week helps you prevent 70% of accidents and diseases that are that are lifestyle related after 50. Pretty significant. Not a bad return on your time of an hour and a half a week of exercise. Fat mass. One fear many have is that your clothes will begin to fit a bit tight as weight creeps up and the body goes from being toned and firm to plumper and flabbier. Detraining has been found to have negative effects on body composition with an associated weight gain decrease in metabolic rate. No shit. First, your calorie requir requirement will decrease. We don't really deal with that too much. Secondly, you're not burning the same amount of calories. At the end of the day, a lot of this is multifaceted. You're, you're taking in the same amount of calories. You're probably not eating as well because exercise, being a cornerstone habit, tends to carry over to nutrition and you eat better when you're working out. And then you start putting on weight. And it's a negative. And I have people that have come back and they're like, you know, I left you, I was at 160 and I'm still 160, but I'm, I'm, I'm not the same person because they basically dropped muscle and they increased body fat. It might be 15 or 20 pounds, but the good news is back, usually within 14 days. I get new, I get clients that have been with me before coming back, 14 to 21 days, significant improvements because you know the deal. It's kind of like a doctor. Why would you come back to me if you not if you were working out with us before and dropped out? You know, we know you. We know your history. You know our system. Just like you go to a physician that you trust, you know and trust he is, he has experience with you or somebody that cuts your hair. They know you or it, you, it just works. You go faster with somebody we don't have to, there's a, not a flat learning curve. 
you know the deal, we know you, and things have improved since we saw you last. That's why I like to use that position, because let's say you dropped out three years ago. He's still been practicing for three years. He has three more years of experience to help you along into this getting back into shape thing. And how to manage a detraining period. I like this sentence. The best way to stop fitness losses is not to abandon exercise in the first place. That's it. If you don't stop, you just show up and have lots of things to pull from. You stay in shape over time. Regaining fitness after a break. One thing that will work in your favor is muscle memory. Essentially, your muscles have special cells in your muscle fibers that remember previous training movements so that when you get back to working out after an extended layoff, you're able to regain, regain lost muscle quicker. Ease back into it. Work with a person that knows you and knows your body and has a system that's proven to getting you back into shape. So I just want to talk to you guys today, and I'll be back tomorrow about how to get you back into shape if you've had a layoff of some time, whether it be a month, two months, two years, or 20 years. It's a lot easier doing it the second time around, and we'll talk about that. If you like this video, like it, share it, comment below. I'm Dave Fanning with the Body from Personal Training Fitness Boot Camps. Talk to you guys later.